Hi everybody, my name is Brent LaFoon. I'm here in Tabanan, Bali, and today I'd like to teach you about a pose called Visva Mitrasana, which is a fairly challenging sidearm balance that requires a lot of hip and hamstring opening. Before I teach you about the pose itself, though, I want to tell you the story behind the pose so that you can understand what it is you're practicing beyond just the stretching and the strengthening of your body. Every pose in yoga has a physical as well as a mental component, and if you're only practicing the physical, you're really only getting half the value out of your practice. In the case of Visva Mitrasana, this pose takes its name from a king, who is a very powerful king, but also sort of belligerent and a little bit entitled. As the story goes, this king, whose name was Visva Mitra, was traveling across the countryside one day with his army when they came upon the residence of the noble sage Vashista. Now, Vashista, as some of you know, has his own pose, Vashistasana, a basic sidearm balance. Okay? So this pose is very much related to Visva Mitrasana, but Visva Mitrasana is much more difficult because Vashista was known for his patience. In that pose, when you're practicing it, you're practicing cultivating patience. Visva Mitra had no patience. He was hungry, he was tired, he told Vashista to feed him and his army. Vashista said no problem. He had this sacred cow that he was able to feed the king and his army with without having to kill it. And when Visva Mitra realized he could do this, he wanted to know how it was possible. Vashista told him it was a special cow given to him by the gods. This sounded like something that a king should have. So Visva Mitra said, give me your cow. And Vashista said, sorry, no can do. So Visva Mitra got really upset and challenged him to a duel. And to his surprise, Vashista, who looked like a feeble little old man, was able to outwit the powerful king and beat him in a duel. This really upset Visva Mitra, got him angry, got him frustrated, but he was no fool. And he realized that Vashista must know something that he didn't. So he humbled himself and he decided to become Vashista's student. And this marked the beginning of King Visvamitra's transformation into a sage and a yogi. It took him many years though. Practice was not easy. He would get frustrated. He would throw temper tantrums. He would regress. He would give up. And then he would have to start all over again. But Vashista, who was known for his patience, stuck with him. He never gave up on a student as a teacher. And he helped him along his way until finally he was able to learn the ways of the yogi. So, that's the story behind the pose. When you're ready to come into the pose, you want to make sure that you've done a lot of hip opening, hamstring opening, forward folds, pigeon poses, double pigeons, anything to get yourself warmed up. Probably also a side angle pose or two to make sure you stretch your anocostal muscles and your ribs. Open up your shoulders a little bit. When you're ready to give it a try, step your right foot forward, left foot back, put the left heel down on the floor, just like you would when you're coming into Warrior One. From here you want to wrap the right shoulder behind your right knee and really wedge it back there as far as you can. This is a pretty challenging move already, so take your time with this and get it right. When you can, put the right hand down on the ground. Okay? Start to lift your right heel, then lift the right foot. If you can, reach over, grab the outside of your right hand, your right foot with your, right, with your left hand, what I meant to say, and then start to stretch your right leg out overhead. Try to strengthen both thighs to straighten both legs and press through the outside edge of your back foot in order to lift your hips. You want to try to turn your chest up towards the sky and make sure you're breathing deeply. Take about five or ten deep breaths and then slowly put your foot down and release the pose. Now, that's one way to come into it. If you find that very difficult, you may be able to come into it from the ground. You can take your right leg and wrap it up behind your right shoulder. Plant your right hand on the floor so the arm is between your leg and your body. And then start to bend your left knee in. Grab the outside of your right foot. Maybe heel toe that left foot back a little bit. And when you're ready, start to press off that leg. And re-extend back into Visva Mitrasana. Now if you practice Ashtanga Yoga, you wouldn't hold the foot, which is actually much more difficult to do. Hold the arm up. Keep the legs strong. Again, a couple more breaths. And when you're ready, release the pose. This is a very difficult pose. It shows up in the third series of Ashtanga Yoga, which, if you know anything about Ashtanga, most people spend many years getting to the point where they're even ready to practice the third series. So, be patient with this pose. Remember the lessons of King Visvamitra. If you get frustrated, if you get irritated, try not to lose your cool. Be patient. Be calm. Your body will open up into the pose when it's ready. You have to have faith, you have to have persistence, and you have to have dedication to your practice. But most of all, enjoy your practice, trust the journey. You'll get there eventually. Have fun with it. Namaste.